welcome guys welcome to another video in this video we're gonna go over another passing concept in the first video of passing concepts we went over the stick concept um, I hope you liked that video I hope it gave you some insight on uh, that particular concept and etc this one we're gonna go over the double slants um, now the double slants concept is another you know quick hitting play and it's really good against um, double high safety defenses. So remember, you got four, two zone, two man, cover zero, and then you have cover three and cover one. That number sequence uh, should be burned in your head, I think. You know, it makes it easier when you condense everything down to just those six different shell coverages. Cover four zone, cover two zone, cover two man, cover zero, cover three, and cover one. Here's your double high side, and this is your single high side. Uh, now I know cover zero should theoretically be in its own category of no deep safeties, but I like to just keep it in the double high safety family for simplicity's sake. So that way we don't have three different categories and etc. I think it's easier just to remember it this way. And an acronym we can use is MOFO here and MOFC. And they stand for middle of field open and middle of field closed. So I'm pretty sure that that's self-explanatory to you. Um, with the double high safety family, you know, the middle of the field is open and the middle of the field is closed in single high when you have that deep middle third safety. Okay. So the double slants play is something that you can use to attack all of these defenses here. So it's, it's a very beneficial concept to have in your pocket. And again, once you learn the concept and what you're trying to do with the concept, you can now run it from any formation. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a plethora of plays you can, you know, incorporate into your scheme with it and et cetera. You know, so it's good to understand an entire concept. Let's go ahead and go over it. Um, usually you run it from a two by two set. I should say the majority of the times, I really can't think of a, three by one set where you would run it and there probably is one um, you know but I'm not gonna get into that so we primarily run it from my two by two set and you can see it on screen we have our slot receiver running the slant and then your outside receiver who's outside of the screen running the slant now they really shouldn't run it the same way you know you think of a slant where you take three steps and then you know you run you know at that angle for the slant well, you know, that's true for the outside receiver, but the inside re receiver in this concept should really kind of like take it like a one step and then boom, fire inside on the slant, you know, a one step go slant. Okay. And, you know, it's really what makes, uh, you, know, you really do that because the inside receiver wants to get underneath this defender and he wants to cross that defender. Okay. So if, if you ran this in Madden 20, it was horrible. Okay, it was absolutely, it was, it was dreadful. And the reason why is because the entire concept was just ran wrong. This slot receiver would run his route and try to run it around this defender. Okay, and the problem with that was, is it would, you know, mess up the timing with the backside slant and essentially this defender would defend both routes by himself. Okay, so, you know, that's the issue with, you know, having people who don't understand football develop a game that's supposed to simulate real football. You know, you run into issues like that where an entire concept is null and void and you can't run it in your game because you don't design it correctly. So good thing is they run it a lot better in Madden 21 he will fight across this defender and look to fight and get underneath that defender and cross his face. Okay. Now, if you watch the animation of this receiver, it looks as if he still takes three steps and then goes inside when I think really he should take one step and boom, fired inside. Okay. But again, it's Madden. So what more do you expect? At least they got the underneath and cross face, right? Okay. So, you know, it was all the way wrong in Madden 20. You know, it's it's better in Madden 21, but, you know, he's still taking three steps and going inside. He should take one, I think, and go inside. So maybe they'll get it right by Madden 25, right? 
So, you know, let's hope they get it by Madden 25. They'll get that right. But let's go ahead and run it. Uh, when you come out, you see that it's the middle of the field is open. It's double high safety family. So it could be four to two or zero. Cover four zone, cover two zone, two man or, or cover zero. You know, but here's the thing, you know, once you read the middle of the field is open pre-snap, you know, then this is where you're like, okay, then I can work my double slant side. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our eyes on this defender. Um, this defender will come into play later. I'll get into that. But for right now, just we'll just pay attention to this defender and make sure he doesn't um, get inside of our slant route. And if our receiver, if he doesn't, I mean, you'll you'll know it pretty, pretty quickly because you got to fire this thing in there. You just rocket it in there to your slot receiver. So let's go ahead and play it. Boom, fire it in. As you see, he crosses face and stays underneath the defender there. Do it again. Fire. Look at that. Seven yards, eight yards, nine yards, etc. And this is against cover two zone. Do it again. Fire in there. He crosses face. So, you know, if he does his job and crosses this guy, the only one who can uh, make a play on this ball is the third defender in which is typically like your mike linebacker okay so what you want to do is you know we'll get into this a little bit later is because your eyes is on this whole area post snap you know you, you've read double high pre-snap so you're going to work the double slant side when you snap the ball i mean it's not like you have to look at this guy then look at this guy then fire the slant i mean it's just too much to 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 go about it because you're looking at this entire area, you pretty much see what these two defenders are doing at the same time. Okay. Now, the reason why he wants to fight across and underneath this defender is because you kind of put this guy in a bind, right? So if this guy were to fight really hard aggressively inside and kind of jump this route, the beauty of it is, is then you can throw backside on this slant. That's the whole point of the double slants. Okay. So let's snap the ball. Let's watch this and, and replay really quickly. Again, he should take one step and fire across. It would be so much better. He would probably already be about about here. But, you know, we can we can live with this. At least he stays underneath it. That's what we want. And we let go that the ball in there. Now, let's just imagine he was inside. He somehow fought inside to get here. So let's act like he's not even here. We'll put the little sticky man right here. Well, then this window would be wide open here to throw your backside slant and that's what it's all about I guess I went there to showcase this there you go so it's a real simple concept um, but it's a concept that man, it's, it's effective man it's 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 effective and I'm pretty sure it's in every single playbook NFL offenses use this stuff so now uh, I think I went to cover four. So we did two zone to see how it works, and it does. And now we're in cover four. And as you can see, we snap the ball. And look how he's fighting to stay underneath and cross his body. You know, again, you want to get this in there. You got to be in rhythm. So you, uh, trust me, you want to go to practice. And, you know, the quarterbacks are a little bit different on the wind up. And even their height can come into play. I mean, Drew Brees is, is real short. On other quarterbacks, I like to um, throw low when I throw this inside slant because it throws it low to where he doesn't take a big hit. You know, he'll just almost like a sliding motion and, and catch the ball the way Peyton Manning used to throw to like Marvin Harrison. So it, it, it looks really nice. You kind of save him from a possible big hit. But Drew Brees, when you do it with him, you know, since he's so short, these guys up front kind of jump up and get their hand on the ball and et cetera. So. You know, but he still puts an accurate when you just throw regularly, regularly with Drew Brees. Um, you know, he's just pinpoint accurate here. So let's go ahead and play it. Rock it in there. Again, our eyes are on this whole area. The second we, our peripheral sees the mic move inside. And here's the thing, like the mic... This is why it's probably, you know, essential that you run it from 
two receivers set on the back side. And then you have your one, two, three over here. You know, so, you know, your three receiver hook player is always going to relate to the number three. So he would want to step towards the number three, right? Which would open up more space for that slant to come inside. So that's my opinion. I, I think you should always have it on the double slants on the two receiver side. I wouldn't have like a tight end here and, and run it with trips. Let's look at the back side. Let's just imagine this guy isn't here. Let's say he fought inside. It's good to know, you know, what ifs, right? What if my guy wasn't open inside? Would my backside have been open? And the answer is yes. You want to cover all your bases while you're in the practice field. We run it again. Fire it in there. Six yards, seven yards, eight yards, seven yards. It's like an extension of the run. So now we're running it against two men. And now I'm going to show you a video of, um, I believe it was Carr from the Raiders. And they ran uh, this double slant concept against what looked like two man. Well, let's go ahead and watch that. Right here, um, you know, it looks, I'm going to play it, but I believe this guy came up and ran his slant. And then you had this guy right here run his slant and the inside slot receiver was pretty covered on his slant it looked like his man was all over that route and it would make sense because he's on the line of scrimmage looking to get hands and get physical but your receiver here is playing off right so you know he was able to get a free release on the outside and beat his man on the slant and i think this was a touchdown too okay and you know this is perfect design right so they ran it from a stack receiver set. And it's obvious why they did that. It was because, you know, they're going to jam the point man, the guy on the line of scrimmage, but it's harder to get hands on this guy. And typically uh, defenders want to play off against stack receiver sets when they're in man-to-man -man coverage. So that allows you to get a free release off the line of scrimmage. And you'll see it ran here. Double slants up top. You see that? Yeah. So, you know, I, I know I'm right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, I just hate seeing this. Watch that inside receiver and watch how he does a one-step slant. Boom, go. Let's watch it again really quickly. So watch watch this receiver right here. He will do like a one-step boom. Not, not a one, two, three, go. Okay, everything has a reason, a purpose. Watch it. I'm about to play it right now. Boom, go. So we'll watch it one more time here and just watch the top receiver. So you'll see the, the slot receiver was covered, but the receiver up top, um, because the inside receiver was covered, well, then now you work the backside slant. Good protection and he completes it and staying at his feet is Renfro. Hunter Renfro. And obviously he went for a touchdown. Um and you know, I believe it was two man based upon what I saw with the defenders. And then seeing the safety come up. You know, that's probably the deep half safety. And um, you know, you know, he tackled like a child. So, you know, they he gave up a touchdown. So here we're in the same situation. We're in two man. Um, man, that makes me think, man, maybe I should go. Maybe we could find a stack receiver set in the game and, uh, you know, run double slants from there. But, you know, you may have a problem because this guy doesn't run a one step, you know, whatever. Let's just go ahead and run it. Snap the ball. And right here, I don't like the way he's getting real physical here. You know, this could be a problem. Here's a problem in man-to-man -man coverage. When this guy's blocking the back, now this guy who's in man-to-man -man with him, because he's blocking, he may sit in like a spy or zone up in the middle here, right? So that may cause a problem for your inside slant. So typically, you know, you would like to get all five receivers out into routes so you don't have stragglers sitting in the middle because, you know, your running back was sitting to block. There's no, really no reason to have him block. 
on this concept. So let me go ahead and play it. Let me stop talking. I threw that inside slant anyways because I felt that he beat him. So that's fine. But it's really this really tight window there. See, the reason why, you know, it would make sense for you to send this guy out on a route is because there really is no sense in him sitting to block in a three-step fire the ball concept. Well, who is he going to block? Like, even if you have an unblocked defender, he's not going to get there before the ball's gone. So you might as well release him out into a route to open up uh, more windows in the defense. So, for example, I wonder if I did it here. Let's see. So, okay, right here, I snapped the ball. I don't see right here is I don't like this, right? You know, granted, we may still be able to fit it in there, but it's a little bit tight. You know, he's fighting over the top and, you know, he's getting very aggressive on this receiver. So this is where we can throw backside. And there you go. Just like that play against the Raiders. I mean, with the Raiders. Why am I going to replay here? So, you know, it's real late at night, so excuse me for being stupid here. Uh, but I decided to get this guy going on a, on, out on a route. And it, it was pretty foolish of me to have him go this way. Like, why why do that? Because now if this guy's in man-to-man -man coverage, he's going to go this way. He may, you know, impede the throw, etc. Granted, it's still fine because he runs out of the play, but you would rather him run this way. So why not have this guy going a flat this way? Uh, just ignore these routes over here. I would never, you would definitely want to change these routes. I just wanted to show the concept on this side because the flat slant combo in this game is dreadful. So we play and you see how the linebacker is ran out of there because now he's in man-to-man -man coverage. So, so that pretty much assures that, you know, this no defender will be able to poach from inside. I didn't like that inside slant, so we throw backside. Okay. So I believe that this is it on that. But there's a little bit more I want to get into because think about it. In the first passing concept, we went over the stick concept, right? And then now we just went over double slants. Well, here's the thing. This is where you complement schemes together passing concepts together so you have an answer against whatever the defense throws at you because against mofo or du uh, double high safety defenses the double slants plays is, is very good against it right even against cover zero blitz um, double slants can attack all of them matter of fact i'm going to show you a play in which I have a double slants from my scheme from the New York Giants playbook where you know I run it against cover zero all the time like I will audible out of my play into double slants against cover zero and I've gotten so many touchdowns off of it so I'm gonna show you that right now Inside slant immediately. one step fire it in there take it to the house So that was pretty much the same ordeal. I didn't show the whole thing, but I just wanted to be real quick on that to show you. So we show double slants against cover four, two zone, two man, and it works beautifully against cover zero. The only thing is when you run it against cover zero, you really want to be very aware of the user mugging inside. So let me get back to our screen. You know, if you had the user, you have your double slants here. And they're running cover zero, so you have you know a corner here and like a safety manned up against this guy. So you know they both should win their routes. You want to be aware of of the user user and somebody inside, and then jumping the inside route. So usually against cover zero, I almost always throw backside, and you know a lot of times I get a touchdown because once you beat your man, you go upfield. It's just the field is wide open, you know, but. In other cases, when I snap it and I see the user like way over here somewhere, then we can throw that inside slant and uh, again, travel upfield and, and get 15, 20, 25 yards. In a lot of cases, you know, just a straight touchdown. So back to what I was saying, double slants is good against all of the coverages in the double high safety defense. 
but the stick concept that we went over um, in our first passing concept video is very good against cover three and cover one single high safety defenses right so why not have double slants on one side and then the stick concept on another side so that way when you come out and you have that play called you look at the defense and when you see double high you say okay I'm gonna work the double slant side and when you see single high you say okay I'm gonna work the stick side you know it's it's beautiful to tie concepts together so they work well together and everything's in in unison so I decided to go to the stick and what do you know I'm pretty sure if you go to your stick concept in your playbook I pretty much guarantee that you will have a play where they will have a double slant from the two receiver side and then stick on the other side as we see right here so let's go ahead and run it let's run um, our stick on one side and double slants on the other side let's say we come out we see it's double high remember we always convert this guy to a comeback pattern I just think that that's just so much better than him running a straight go but be even when we see double high and we're going to work the double high uh, slant side, I still, why not, you know, hot route him to a comeback pattern anyways. That way you don't give the play away in some ways. Okay, so, but we're going to work the double slant side and we're going to read this defender. Good thing about spreading them out like this is now you kind of take the Mike linebacker, this guy who's usually about here, you take him out of the play because we spread them out and now he has to honor this player over here so it makes it even easier read on the slant here snap the ball we fire it backside because we didn't like the way that that apex defender jumped inside and what ended up happening was they showed double high pre-snap and then they rotated down into single high so this guy came down and this guy went to deep middle so in essence you would rather work the stick side but again the problem with disguising coverage is when you rotate late like that where you don't rotate at all you rotate post snap and sometimes the things that your defense would have taken away uh, you're not able to because you're out of position so you know we're still able to throw the double slant side snap the ball eyes on this defender as soon as he moves in like that you know, and you want to look to throw backside now. Now, if we look to the single high side, if we knew that it was cover three pre-snap, we would want to look over here. And I believe eventually you see the stick route open up because he runs up field, turns, and he looks for, you know, grass to kind of settle into the void. We could have threw to him or the flat after this guy expanded upfield so again you come out here's another play double high so we should work the double slant side linebacker is moved far over convert that guy to a comeback fired it fire it right in there double high work double slants still make our conversions and right there was a mistake you saw that I should have threw backside he was open single um, the slot receiver got mugged at the line of scrimmage and that's our, our running back too it's probably why I assumed he would get open but based upon the formation that's our running back and he's not you know a great receiver when getting jammed at the line of scrimmage obviously our best receiver is and you saw how wide open he was double high and here's an issue here. This guy, the formation dictates that he should be over here. Okay, so right there, something should click, like something's wrong here, right? This guy should be over here, but he's not. So because he's out of position, you may want to look to attack this side, even though that it's double high, because we have three against two on this side if this guy doesn't come down, right? But let's see what happens here. I mean, he's still far too inside to impact a quick throw here. So. Yeah, so I decided to work the three on two side. 
and the replay should show why did I show replay I don't think I did so let's go back really quickly see what happens that's why so we see why the mic was inside is because the safety was coming down and they were actually playing some form of single high okay so I mean here's the thing his leverage alone kind of dictated that we should work the stick side um, but essentially they rotated into single high and you would want to work the stick side anyways so you know his lever you know his his alignment kind of messed it up for his defense anyway but as you can see we still could have went to our double slant side just because his alignment is just he's really playing in the middle of nowhere like if you pick one defend over here or defend over here the worst thing you can do is defend nowhere you know and, and again it's just the the play called so it is what it is typically this would probably be the user you know so if you would see him step this way post snap then we can just work over here post snap you see him step this way then we can just work over here right because it's a numbers advantage on this side and then we're relying on the double slants to win their one-on-ones on this side so that's 10 yards So here's another variation. How about you know a different formation? How about we come out with the back in the backfield and then we motion him to a slot and then turn him to a slant? I mean there's there's so many different variations of things that you can run so everything doesn't look exactly the same. But because you know the concept, you can just you know, run it eight, ten times a game and your opponent will have no way of, of knowing that it's it's you know you're you're about to throw it at him. So here I went to the West Coast offensive playbook just to see a different flair of it from a different playbook. And you know, it really is kind of like a West Coast principle, you know. West Coast is all about the short game, getting five receivers out into routes, um, stretching the defense horizontally, uh, et cetera. So we went to stick or slant and look at that look at the different variation we have here now of course we have our so this is already in their playbook we were talking about the double stick I mean the stick on one side and the double slant on the other side because they complement each other so well one could attack uh, double high safety defenses very well while the other one's very good against single high so why not have one concept on one side and the other uh, the other concept on the other side and uh, we see here that it's in the West Coast playbook they have this variation and what they do is they motion the back out into position to run the out pattern here so it's just a different variation so we're able to convert this guy into a comeback pattern as well I would rather this guy run a flat really don't like the out pattern but still serves its uh, purpose so we see single high so we want to work the stick side and right away I mean we pick up what 20 yards and you you can see what happened they were obviously in single high cover one man I believe but that motion is so good. He gets out of there so fast. And then, boom, when he gets here, you just snap the ball. So, you know, you that motion kind of gives them not a lot of time to react. And because this guy's in man-to-man -man coverage, whichever one of these linebackers are in man-to-man -man with this guy, they're so far inside that there's just no way they should be able to make it for that out pattern. That's why I really think he should go to the flat instead. I don't like the out, but it's still serves its purpose in the scheme and right here when you feel it's man to man it's like there's just no way and then the stick pattern is just beautiful because it kind of sticks right in front of them and 
rubs him to where you know it kind of impedes his progress to getting to his opponent. I throw it. He catches it at five yards. It's all about yards after the catch with uh, the West Coast. Here the double slant side. We could have went double slant too, because this guy vacates out of there to play man. So I think I'll run this a couple more times and then call it a day with this concept. Run it again. We should work the stick side because it's single high defense. And we pick up about 10 yards. I think this is one more time. Looks like a double high safety defense. Still do our conversion. And boom. I mean... Just rocket it in there. He fights across, stays underneath. Beautiful, and we just get it in there. So that's it on that. Um, hope you you know got a little bit of insight on on the double slants concept. It's a pretty effective concept, man. I, I really do think you should incorporate it with your offense. I sincerely hope that you will practice it first. Don't just go right into a game. And, and start, you know, trying to double slants. I really think you should get your timing down with throwing the play with your quarterback. So all quarterbacks' wind-ups are a little funky and weird. And I think Madden has, has done something with their patch to where they kind of elongated the release of the quarterbacks to kind of help out the defenses in the game, which is stupid. That's just another Band-Aid fix, right? Instead of you doing something that's just... Like, why not just fix the defenses, right? Like, you're going to throw a bandit on it. Here, let's just make it to where the quarterbacks are just more unrealistic and they have longer wind-ups because we're not competent enough to, you know, add things to the defense that defenses need to kind of, you know, function properly against offenses, right? So it is what it is, man. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, hope you enjoyed this, this video and hope you keep coming back.